Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So this is my take on the June 2022 astrological forecast for the month. I'm going to do an intro that will be the same for all signs and ascendants. And then towards the end of the video, I will actually go into your individual sign or ascendant. As usual, I prefer you to read first for or listen to um, your ascendant sign. That tells you what area of your life will be affected. And then uh, you then should listen to your um, sun sign as well, because that just gives you a little bit more detail of what uh, may be coming up for you in this month of June. All right, so we're going to start off with the 3rd of June. And the 3rd of June, we actually have Mercury retrograde that started in Gemini last month, now going direct, but it's going direct at 26 degrees of Taurus, which I thought was very interesting. So this whole Mercury retrograde has covered two signs. Uh, it's not totally unusual to have that happen, um, but you can uh, imagine that Mercury is really more at home in Gemini. So when I saw this, as I looked at other aspects as well, and even though it's always positive to know that uh, any planet, especially a Mercury retrograde, is going direct, but we're not out of the woods yet. So if you've been having some issues with um, any kinds of communications at all, contract negotiations, that, and it still doesn't seem to be resolving, um, at the beginning of June, once this Mercury retrograde has gone direct, don't despair. Um, it will go uh, forward for you. Um, now, the thing that goes with this whole Mercury retrograde going direct is that we've got a square to Saturn. So that's adding in, um, at its most positive, a Mercury uh, going direct with a square Saturn basically says disciplined thinking, right? So it could have you really... Um, getting getting serious about uh, thinking about whatever it is that you need to do and being able to take some action on it. But it can also have another side. Uh, Saturn can actually dampen things down as well. So it might also be on this day that you are seeing things more negatively. And again, that kind of goes back to what I said at the beginning here, that we're not quite out of the woods yet with regards to Mercury coming out of its shadow. Um, so hang on in there for a little while uh, when Mercury will come out of its shadow period and then go into Gemini, its home sign, and uh, things get resolved, especially with regards to any kind of communications or breakdowns in communications. Um, and that actually is going to be on the 19th of June, where Mercury will go direct at four degrees of Gemini. So look, look to that week, the week uh, around the 19th, where things actually start to really improve. All right, so when we look at the fourth the next day, again, Saturn is highlighted, but it's because Saturn is going to go retrograde and it'll go retrograde at 25 degrees uh, of Aquarius. So this is going to be um, an influence of a few months. And I would say that with this whole Saturn going retrograde, it's really going to have, <clears throat> I would say, people in authority, um, institutions, that kind of thing, kind of staying in the background more instead of like laying down the law. This is more like let's write some laws or let's rethink some of these things. So I see that as a positive thing with this um, Saturn retrograde. Now, if you do have anything around the 25 degree mark of Aquarius, you may have some kind of um, delay that happens unexpectedly where someone maybe an authority steps in and says well wait a minute here you're not following the rules you're going to have to do this this and this so i guess knowing the heads up on that i'm making this video um, kind of actually i'm making this video on the weekend of the total eclipse in scorpio <laughs> um, so you've got a heads up on that if you are you know putting together some plans whatever say you're i, I don't know building something or adding to a home you know, that you've got to get uh, special approval from City Hall on that. So it's that type of thing I'm talking about occurring uh, with this Saturn going retrograde. Yeah. Okay, so we have our first full moon on the 14th of this month, and it's a full moon at 23 degrees of Sagittarius, 25 minutes 
It is at 4.51 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. We have Mercury uh, going direct, and it will be at zero degrees of Gemini. So I thought that was interesting, too. Anything that's at zero degrees or 29 degrees of any sign are called critical degrees. So this does speak to some kind of communication. And because it's in Gemini, this could be the sort of foreshadowing of things resolving in that whole communication sector uh, that will really take place around the 19th of this month. Now the moon in Sagittarius will be squaring Neptune that is in Pisces. So this can bring in uh, some illusions. Um, you know, Neptune also like to likes to dissolve things. So it would be a good time if you do have to get rid of some bad habits, like you, you're drinking too much or eating too much, um, that you can more easily do that, even though it's a square. But it'll certainly highlight this sort of thing where you've got bad habits potentially um, and ask you to resolve some of them. Um, we've got also the moon, though, will be sextiling uh, a retrograde Saturn. So I saw this as positive, uh, for sure, where maybe you are trying to resolve some bad habits of some sort, and um, or, or risk-taking as well. I mean, Sagittarius also can be a risk-taker. So with that square, it's saying, maybe hold off on taking any risks to make your dreams come true, to make a wish come true. Um, something kind of like that's out there that you can't reach or can't quite hold on to, you're going to want to make it real with the Saturn involved here by sextile. Now you may get an opportunity because sextiles are opportunities, but because we've got that square happening there as well, it could just be that for some of us, um, that dream that you have, that wish that you want to make true, that vision that you have for yourself in the future, kind of seems to have a few clouds in it. Um, but don't despair about that. This is just a temporary thing. Um, and this is not an eclipse. It's just a full moon. It's going to bring something to light. However, this full moon harks back to another time when we did have a total new moon eclipse. And that was on the 14th of December, 2020. So I would say a useful way of using, using this full moon or utilizing this full moon energy is to look back and ask yourself, what was happening around December 2020 uh, that was new, that started new, and it's a to was a total new moon, new moon eclipse, so this would have been a significant time, especially for Sagittarians and for the opposite sign, uh, Geminis. Um, this full moon brings things now to a conclusion and asks you, how are things going since you had that new start? So for Sagittarians, I would say that this is a time of um, a time of reckoning is kind of the word that I'm coming up with, where some Sagittarians may have to look at that new start that they made in December 2020 or maybe January 2021 and ask themselves, is this working? Was this a little bit of an illusion? Because we've got Neptune now sitting on the full moon in Sagittarius. Or, or is this something that can become real, bringing the Saturn in? Uh, and I can get opportunities to make this more permanent. Uh, so Saturn is also about enduring effects as well. Okay, so the next thing we have is on the 17th. We have lovely Venus, lovely, charming, sweet Venus, who's described as the lesser benefic, is going to be conjuncting the north nodes in Taurus. 22 degrees. So if you've got anything around 22 degrees or say your own north nodes are at 22 degrees, this could bring in love, money, or at least an increased value of yourself. Uh, just a really positive effect basically. It can stand for women as well where um, maybe in the collective we see a woman or women being brought into the news uh, favorably. Um, Maybe that whole thing, uh, Roe versus Wade, actually gets resolved in a positive way for women. Okay, I want to go back to that full moon again in Sagittarius. I, I don't always look up the Sabian symbols. And Sabian symbols basically is a book 
that has every single degree um, of the signs, the astrological signs, and it gives you some information that could describe more what may happen at that time, whatever it is that you're looking at. So we always round up our degrees. So this we take up to 24 degrees of Sagittarius. And the Sabian symbol is beautiful. It's a bluebird perched on the gate of a cottage. I mean, just that image conjures up this lovely, warm feeling. It maybe makes us a little sentimental as well. But the blue bird is really a symbol of happiness. And then sitting on the gate of a cottage kind of reflects a well-adapted society. So that type of energy, uh, and certainly the description that they use in the Sabian symbol, I think is something that we should bear in mind, that although there may be a few challenges at this full moon, um, the end goal will be a lot of happiness that will result of this. I mean, Sagittarius, is ruled by Jupiter and Jupiter of course is the greater benefic and it is like Santa Claus it just wants to bring you gifts in the end might have to work for those gifts a bit that's all okay so this year we have the summer solstice that will be on the 21st and I include a chart so some astrologers take this as a whole six month effect um, I tend to take it as um, more like a seasonal effect. So it's like a three month, four month effect here um, till we have an equinox happening and then the energy shift again. So it really is a, a major shift of energy. And in particular, we like to look at both the, the, the sun we already know is going to be at zero degrees of cancer. But then we look at the other planets and in particular the moon. And so this year at the summer solstice on the 21st, we have a moon at three degrees of Aries. And so this says to me that the mood of the people, so the moon can represent the, the people, the mood of the people, is going to be very action oriented. Um, it can even be militarialistic. So this can represent the military because Mars actually rules Aries. Uh, but it's also going to have a lot of people want to do to get on their own individual path, do things their way. Um, and be emotionally more assertive and forward with regards to what they want. And like I said, I think this, I take this as covering an approximate three month period, uh, the effects of this. So this will be all over the summer period. But it can give also, um, you know, individuals um, a spotlight on them, right? So certainly, um, for any Aries individuals, you could literally have a spotlight put on you for some reason or ask to lead something. Um, you know, Aries is a cardinal sign and that actually refers to a leader of some sort as well. All right, so the next thing that we have is we have the sun is going to be squaring uh, this moon. And that is not a good thing at this summer solstice. I would say that there's going to be a discrepancy or uh, an inharmonious type influence here between those in power and the people. So that's what I saw the sun in Cancer being, power. Um, and in particular, it can be the homeland, right? Your homeland um, exerting power over uh, the people. And I mean, we're having that already happening in Shanghai. Uh, and elsewhere in China. Uh, so that effect uh, could this could represent this transit here at the summer solstice af affect the whole period of the summer uh, with regards to that type of thing that the people being held in check here uh, against their will. Um, the other thing that we have too is uh, we have Venus going to be trining Pluto. Well, this just spells out desire. I want to do something here. Now, a trine can pass by without any real um, effects because it's so pleasant, but it is a very positive aspect. So this could be um, our money markets maybe, so Venus can represent uh, money. Um, I saw this probably our money markets could improve here. I know we've had a few dips happening, but this could actually see over the summer period an increase for some folks. So we have lots of Aries that's happening at this summer solstice. I've already mentioned the moon at three degrees, but we also have Jupiter at six degrees, and then we have Chiron at 16 degrees. 
um, and Mars, which is the ruler of this moon in Aries, is at 20 degrees. So it seems to me that I think there may still be a lot of, like, as I said earlier, military type action, uh, individuals standing up and literally taking a stand, that type of thing, an expansion of that, especially with Jupiter in there. Okay. Let's move on to a retrograde that's going to happen. We're going to have Neptune retrograde at 25 degrees of Pisces on the 28th of June. Now, what's interesting is this 25 degree of Pisces also was where very close to within minutes of that whole Jupiter conjunct Neptune that happened mid uh, April this year. It actually covered a lot of the whole period of April, but the exact was mid April. So this could bring for all of us um, another highlight about literally reconsidering, rethinking that great inspiration we had with regards to the dreams that we wanted to make true. It could just have us maybe um, with Neptune going retrograde, have us just being a little more circumspect with regards to what did I did I think too big? Did I take too many steps uh, all at once? Do I need to reconsider that inspiration that I had? And was there a piece maybe missing from the picture? Uh, was there a bit of fogginess or unclearness that I now need to address and look at? So that's how I would use this Neptune uh, retrograde period. It'll be for a number of months. I don't see this as a negative thing. I think it's just something where it's a readjustment of um, maybe for some folks, uh, taking those rose-colored glasses off, right? And uh, just looking more carefully. It doesn't mean don't give up on your dreams, that's for sure, or the wishes that you want to come true. This is a fabulous year for that for everybody. Now, especially for Pisces, um, for sure this is going to be influencing Pisces that, say, have a sun around 25 degrees or those folks that have an ascendant. And it's going to be a reconsideration, like I said, I believe, of those dreams, wishes that you had and that you felt inspired by mid-April of this year. All right, so we kind of end the month here with a new moon. And the new moon is going to be in Cancer, seven degrees of Cancer, 23 minutes on the 29th. So happy new year to all my Cancer ascendants and uh, my Cancer sons, uh, especially to my brother John, whose birthday uh, is uh, on the 10th of July. So here we have the moon and the sun together because it's a new moon in Cancer, but it's going to be squaring Jupiter in Aries. Now it's pretty hard to get a bad aspect with Jupiter and I really felt that this whole square actually was promoting positive thinking and a lot of us feeling very generous. We're going to be having a uh, Mercury here at 18 degrees of Gemini. Now it's going to be in conjunct to Uranus that is in Taurus. So that's at 17 degrees. So it's a 17, 18 degrees um, in conjunct. And I really saw this as a round peg trying to be put into a square hole. So there might be a little bit of anger and frustration um, around this new moon. And of course, Cancer is a very emotional sign. Uh, it's the sign of the mother. It's the sign of the family. It's the homeland. Um, but this is a new start. So I would say that if you do feel generous at this time, feel free to use that in some kind of compassionate way because Cancer also does uh, elicit compassion and that type of thing. And the other thing too that a lot of people don't mention is that of course cancer is very intuitive. So there may be some intuitive hits that come up here, especially with that whole in conjunct that we have with the now direct uh, Mercury uh, still in Gemini. But there may be some surprises here with regards to communications because it's Mercury that is in Gemini, right? Um, just be careful with the anger and the frustration um, try instead to funnel that into energy that is more compassionate. Um, maybe even uh, doing something in the home because, of course, cancer represents the home too, your literal home. 
We have a really nice uh, wide sex style with uh, Pluto and Neptune. So this is nice too. This is a supportive aspect that goes back to that whole mid-April of the Neptune conjunct um, Jupiter, where our wishes, dreams, some of us did have magic and miracles happen, but certainly there would have been some kind of inspiration. This just is a supportive aspect of that, where you may get a little more power, in, you know, personal power to um, make more opportunities for yourself to push that dream forward. Okay, so that really ties up, uh, in a small way at least, my view of the astrology in June 2022. So I'm going to move on now next to the signs and the ascendants. All right, Aquarius. So this full moon in Sagittarius on the 14th is in your 11th house. So Sagittarius is a very lucky sign. It's ruled by um, Jupiter. Jupiter likes to give you benefits and gifts. So it could be that you have some benefits and gifts come through friends and groups that you belong to. Um, so don't ignore your friends and your groups, I guess. Uh, and I would say throughout June, not just on the 14th of the month. But certainly you could have some conclusion happening with regards to maybe some of your friends. Maybe some of your friends, uh, maybe foreign friends, because Sagittarius does rule foreign places, foreign people. Uh, maybe some conclusion is going to happen. It might be just a natural evolving thing. But some of your friends say, hey, we're, we're going to have to go back to our homeland. Or you decide you have to leave. Maybe you've been living in a foreign country and you have to leave your foreign friends behind. Um, and it's a natural conclusion. And although everybody's sad about it, because we've got the influence of Saturn, of course, around this full moon, um, it's still something that you need to do to move on. Now, the other thing that this rules too, of course, is your hopes and wishes, Sagittarius, I mean, uh, Aquarius. So Sagittarius here ruled uh, by Jupiter could have some lucky thing come to light. So something may end for you and then you turn around and you say, because of that ending, I can now fulfill, fulfill this wish. So let's go back to the whole thing of your friends, your foreign friends that you have, to, you either leave behind or they leave you and you are for a moment sad about it but then what happens as a result of maybe you going back to your homeland, you are able to fulfill some wish, make some wish come true for yourself. But certainly pay attention to the friends that you have, especially foreign connected friends, because they could bring in some real benefits and luck for you at this time, uh, Aquarius. When we look at the new moon in Cancer, that's in your sixth house. Just on the surface, um, I see the sixth house as where you do your day-to-day -day job. If you don't work, this is the things that you do day-to-day, -day, the habits that you have. They will be affected by a new beginning. It's in Cancer. So for some Aquarius, you're probably going to take up a new day-to-day -day job in your home because Cancer rules the home. You may even, some Aquarians, decide to work with your family as a new initiative or maybe even your mother. But the direct connection I get here for some Aquarius is you're going to take up a new job in your home or somehow your home is going to be involved with regards to your day to day job. For some Aquarians, you may decide that you maybe back in um, uh, mid April, you wanted to make one of your dreams and wishes come true. And that was having your own business. And that own business is going to be now conducted in your home. The other thing is. Uh, nurturing is very much associated with cancer. And because the sixth house re refers to health, generally speaking, I think for some Aquarians, this is you have to nurture yourself to have better health. Maybe some Aquarians are just working too darn hard or working many jobs at once, and you need to take care of yourself. I see, I see this is a big intuitive hit here, um, that pay attention to nurturing yourself. So what can you do? So, so for some folks, start taking regular massages, um, get that pedicure, um, that sort of thing. Take that bubble bath. Um, the other thing that you could do is literally nurture yourself through food, right? I mean, food is very much associated with cancer. So for some Aquarians, you may decide that I'm going to change up the way I eat 
And that would be a really good activity for you at this time. Now, you are hosting Saturn in your sign right now. And on the 4th of June, as I mentioned early in my video, we have Saturn going retrograde at 25 degrees. So certainly if you've got anything at 25 degrees of Aquarius, this Saturn could put a delay on something with regards to you. Um, and this effect's going to be for a few months. It doesn't have to be a bad thing either. And this can also be for some Aquarians, um, because it's going to be in your first house, this, I'm now talking about the Saturn retrograde, um, it could have some authority figures, because Saturn represents authority figures, um, reconsider something. Maybe reconsider some law. Um, that sort of thing could happen. Uh, and that could be a positive thing too, right? Because it's an Aquarius, Aquarius rules the airwaves too. Um, and by extension, it could be anything to do with social media, right? Like Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, anything like that. With Saturn in here, there could be something that, um, there could be some delays of some sort um, or, or some stop put on. Maybe for some Aquarians, you can't use these different things for some reason because you're not following the rules or you're required to follow the rules or new rules are put in place that you have to pay attention to. Okay. Take care, Aquarius. All right, so that wraps up um, the month of June 2022. Um, I want to thank everybody for uh, listening in, commenting. I, I have so much fun uh, listening to your comments uh, and writing back and giving you. I've got lots of new clients that have come in from all over the world. I want to say hello to everybody that I've been uh, doing Zoom uh, astrology sessions on. I've had so much fun with all of you. Uh, I'm just going to give you a little bit of heads up on the July 2022. We have Mercury and Venus going into Cancer. So if you've got any placements in Cancer, that's bringing good news, potential love for some Cancers, and some money maybe too. Uh, we're going to have Mars in Taurus conjuncting the north nodes of the moon. So this is bringing some action with regards to, especially those folks that have north nodes uh, binatally uh, in their chart in uh, Taurus, uh, as well as um, conjuncting Uranus, so some surprise uh, new start for some folks that are associated with that north nodes uh, in um, Taurus. We'll have a full moon that's in Capricorn. So for Capricorns, there's going to be some wrap up for you. And we'll have a new moon in Leo that I have mentioned already in Leo's forecast. I see that as a bright shining star. So Leos, if you're having any challenges, know that that new moon on the 28th of July, which I will cover in my July video, it's going to be a super positive time for you. Uh, and for some folks, there might be some fame coming your way, Leo. All right, I'm going to leave it there. If you want your chart done, as per usual, all the details are below in the text box. I love hearing from everybody and I love doing everyone's astrology. Take care and we're going to see you next month. Bye for now.